You always want to make sure that you do have extra batteries for those flashlights because you know what? In an SHTF situation, it really sucks when the lights go out. So a lot of you people out there have had a lot of great questions on prepping. And today I'm going to answer some of those questions and give you some great ideas on where to start, some of the things you may need, and hopefully this will help you get going on your journey to being self-sufficient in case of some chaotic mess happening in this country, which nowadays could happen at any moment, folks. So stay tuned. First off, a lot of people have asked questions on what is the number one prep? The number one prep is going to be water. Now, however you want to store your water and everything else, if you have ways to hook up, say, rain barrels outside off your gutter system so you can store water that way, that'd be a great thing. You can buy them by the gallon. You could buy water by the little water bottles like the 40 packs at your local supermarket. You can also invest in buying these plastic jerry cans. All right. Different, different ones, different sizes. Okay, you can get some of these bad boys and everything else. And this way here, you can store water. Water is the most important thing. You can live longer without food, folks, than you can without water. Now, I would highly suggest that you go out and you go to Walmart and you spend 12 bucks, all right, and you buy one of these. Now, the reason I am saying this is, okay, you fill this up with water, you put it outside in the sunshine, all right, Granted, if it is summer or if you get a lot of sun in the winter, whatever. The point being is, it's black. It's going to heat up and it's going to give you hot water. Now, you're not supposed to drink out of these. All right. It states it right on the back here because of the plastic that it is made out of. All right. But what you can do is you take these bad boys, fill it up with five gallons of water, put it out in the sun and let that sucker warm up. Now you got hot water that you can wash your kids off with, wash their hands, wash dishes, maybe do some laundry if you had to. Whatever the case may be, you have hot water and you can also take a shower. Because after a while, if you haven't had any hot water or any running water, you're going to start to smell if you get what I'm saying, all right? So having one of these for 12 bucks, I keep several of these. One, I live in Florida. We have sun all year round. So if something happens, we have a hurricane or something, I'll have these bad boys full. And if they turn off the water and that type of situation, I can just put these out in the sun after the storm and I'll have hot water in a matter of hours. Okay, folks? So water is your number one thing that you want to make sure that you're prepping. However you can do it, water takes up the biggest space in your home. It is a very important product. It's the number one thing that you have to store, but it also takes up a lot of space and it weighs a lot once you start getting a lot of it. You also want to make sure that you do have some way to filter water in case you have to go get water from somewhere or anything like that. This way here, boom, you're all set. You can filter out the water and you and your family will have clean drinking water to use for drinking, for cooking, or whatever else you want to use it for at that point in time. So water is your number one product. Number two that you have to worry about in a grid down type situation and a SHTF situation, any type of natural disaster situation or anything else, is once you have your water is a way to cook. You may have to boil your water in order for it to be drinkable and you're not worrying about bacteria and getting sick and somebody dying, if you get what I'm saying. So having ways to cook, like right up here, this is my camp chef. I'm gonna get you a little closer here in a second. You've seen me do cooking videos and stuff on this, and if you, if you haven't seen the videos, go back and look for my cooking videos. There's actually a playlist, and you can go in there. There's a few videos in there on cooking with my preps and with all these different things I'm gonna be talking about today. So this is a camp chef. It has an oven and everything built right into it. Okay, it has two burners on the top. It's perfect. All right, now that is the top of the line. But you could always go with something along the lines of a good old, like, Coleman stove. You know, this is a Coleman stove. 
You can pick those up relatively cheap. This bad boy here, a gas one. So you want to make sure that you do have several different ways of cooking in a time of crisis. Now, I want to show you some other things that are coming real handy that you probably already have around your house. And here they are. So you probably already have something around your house like a gas grill or a charcoal grill. They may be bigger or they might be smaller. These are great because they're portable and you can take them anywhere. All right, I stock gas for this. It'll actually run off the 20 pound tank that this bad boy runs on, my flat top. All right, you can cook anything on this flat top. If you can cook it in your house, I can cook anything on this flat top. But you also have your gas grills and your charcoal grills and your smokers and all those type of things. Those all can be used for emergency type situations, folks. So you may already have some of these in your house and you're already ready for a disaster. The next thing that you really probably want to think about as far as being prepared for any type of disaster or anything is making sure that you have battery banks. Okay, I do have a big old uh, generator out in the garage that runs on gas, but what do you do when the gas runs out? You know, they're talking diesel shortages already. So if you have battery banks, like this is a 300 watt and these are 250, okay? I get them from rock piles. Right back here is a 100 watt solar panel. That's what's back here. And I've done videos on all these things. But my point is, if you have battery backup, now you can get your battery banks in all different sizes and power. It's all on what you can afford to spend at this given point in time. So if you have a way to make sure that you have power, you have ways to charge those battery banks, that's gonna last you for a very long time while you're going through the situation you're going through. So having some battery banks with solar panels is probably the best bet. And make sure that if you do have flashlights and all that kind of stuff around the house, you either have rechargeable batteries or extra batteries for all those different flashlights because all different sizes of flashlights sometimes take a lot of different size batteries. So you need to go through, make yourself a list. So you this way here, you know what you're dealing with and what you gotta get. You don't wanna be left in the dark now, do you? Now, one of the last things that we're gonna be talking about, next to last, I should say, is food, all right? So having canned food, all different types from your canned potatoes all the way over to your canned veggies and all that kind of stuff and meats and sauces and all this is going to be a very, very good thing for you to have in a time of need that you can use with all your preps and everything else because you need this in order to survive, right? Water is the number one thing. Food is going to be the number two thing, all right? And you have to make sure that you have some of these too. Follow me over here. Now over here, we're on the pasta side of the house, all right? Now we're big pasta eaters, okay? So we got lots of pastas and everything else and all that kind of stuff. You wanna make sure that you have rice. Now you can store your rice like this, vacuum sealed. You can put it into like this here as a Marlar bag, but this is actually five pounds of flour, folks. You see how that sucker is? It's rock solid. That's how it's gotta be if you're gonna do this right. You have to make sure that you're putting stuff away. You can take, you can store these like this, for a while and then you can take and put in marlar bags you can vacuum seal them you can do whatever you want to do the sky's the limit and you can do it because you know what folks you have to be prepared for you and your family and there's another bonus one for this one so stay tuned if you really want to take your preps to the next level i highly suggest you start looking at freeze-dried foods now i've talked about having freeze-dried foods and everything else there's bonuses to them and there's drawbacks it just depends on what you got and everything else so the sky is the limit and you're the one that gets to make the choice on how you want this all to play out it's all up to you and it's all up to your pocketbook all right so there's two things left that we have to talk about all right and one of the questions was uh, what do you need uh, how do I, how do i do a go bag or is a, a go bag even necessary if i just plan on staying in my house 
Well, first off, you want to make sure that you have a go bag that's ready to go with all the supplies and everything that you're going to have that you need to survive in case you have to leave your home or your family has to leave your home. And granted, if you've got little dinky kids, you're going to have to carry the weight. Somebody's going to have to carry the weight. Unless you buy yourself one of those collapsible little wagons, you can pull that behind you with all your stuff in it. Point being here is, having a go bag is very important. And this way here, if something changes in the last minute or something, something happens, and you have to go, you don't have a choice, you can't stay in your home anymore. Having a go bag ready that you can grab it and go, that's why it's called a go bag, grab it and go. This way here, it gets you out of the house a lot faster in your vehicle and down the road away from harm. That's the whole idea behind having a go bag. Now, let's talk about the number one thing that you really gotta make sure that you have besides water and maybe some food, okay, is first aid. You can have any kind of first aid kit you wanna buy. As long as it's things that you know how to use. You can go to Walmart and buy one of these bad boys. I'm sure we've all seen these, right? You can get small little kits. You can get whatever you want. Or you can do like I did and I just take and I built my own. All right. Now I also, when you have your first aid kit here, folks, you want to make sure that you have backup supplies to replenish. It doesn't matter if it's this case or if it's this little dinky case. You got to have stuff to replenish this because I guarantee you that if it is an SH TF situation and everything has really gone south, you're going to need a first aid kit at some point in time, whether it's for you, somebody in the family, a close friend, or it could be a passerby that you just feel the need to help. But you have to be able to replenish that so you can use it again when, you're, when you need it. That's the whole point. So I hope this answered a lot of you people's questions and a lot of the comments that are out there on prepping and some of the things that you may need and these type of situations and stuff. So we've covered everything. Water is number one, a way to cook. However you want to do it, you probably already have things in your house, right? I mean, come on, you know? And then we covered having like generators and battery banks and solar power and extra batteries for those flashlights because you don't want to be left in the dark now, do you? And you also want to make sure that you are making sure that you do have plenty of non-perishable food, canned goods, dry goods, and everything else. Whatever you use on a basic day in your life for you and your family, that's what you got to stockpile. You have to figure out ways to do it. You also have to know, okay, well, you know, I'm going to put this stuff in mylar. I'm going to vacuum seal this. I'm going to put this stuff in canyon jars. The can goes and stuff. I'm going to store in a cool, dry place and you are golden. And then for the last one, you have to make sure that you do have your go bag that is ready and set and ready to go and that you can walk out that door in a moment's notice. And don't forget the first aid kit. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video today. Make sure that you do have that first aid kit packed, ready, and extra supplies because you just don't know what's going to happen. Now do we? You always want to make sure that you do have extra batteries for those flashlights because you know what? In an SHTF situation, it really sucks when the lights go out. Catch you on the flip side.